In this video, I'm going to talk about scarlet fever and group strip A infections. This is because there's been a lot in the press this weekend um, about the rise of cases and families and doctors are understandably a little bit worried and I've been getting lots of questions from friends and family and I thought it might be useful to do this video now um, to try and hopefully answer some of your queries, maybe alleviate some concerns and so you can feel like you understand a little bit more than what you've just read in the news headlines. So scarlet fever is usually a very mild illness and it's caused by a bacteria called group A streptococcus or we call it group A strep for short. Now there has been an increase in rates of scarlet fever and unfortunately there has also been an increase in the most dangerous sort of this caused by invasive group A streptococcus. This has led really sadly to the deaths of six children since September and this is what's caused the nervousness and worry, understandably. What I would say, first of all, is it's still very rare, this invasive form, and most children who get scarlet fever, and it is mostly children who are affected by it, will be fine, have some antibiotics, and will get over it without any problem. On top of that, there's also a host of other viruses going around at the moment uh, to cause coughs, colds, sore throats, runny noses. So we have to try and work out which ones are just a virus because antibiotics don't treat viruses and which ones may be scarlet fever caused by strep A and that do require antibiotics. So it's quite a lot to understand, isn't there? So I'll try and pick it apart and help you get to grips with it. So scarlet fever, as I've said, it is um, usually mild, but it's very contagious. Symptoms can include a high temperature, sore throat, vomiting, and typically we get what's described as a sandpapery rash. So on pale skin, you may notice that as a kind of pinky reddy rash. It looks a bit like sunburn with goosebumps. On darker skin, it's less obvious to see, but if you feel it, you feel that it feels like a rough sandpaper rash. That with a sore throat is often a bit of a giveaway that it could well be scarlet fever. We can sometimes swab this, but actually lots of us hold this group A strep in our throats, children and adults, for weeks at a time without even knowing about it. So the throat swabs are sometimes helpful, sometimes not. And even a negative throat swab doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't scarlet fever. So typically we try and just go off what we find clinically to determine whether or not it's scarlet fever and whether or not you need antibiotics. Other symptoms you can get include swollen neck glands. You can get a rash, like a pink face, often spared around the mouth. When we look at the throat, sometimes we can see red spots on the top of the palate. And sometimes the tongue, we describe it as a strawberry tongue. So it can be quite red and swollen. Once children are getting over scarlet fever, you might find that the, the tips of their fingers, the skin just peels off um, for a little while afterwards. Although that sounds a bit scary, that itself isn't actually dangerous. So scarlet fever is spread through mucus and saliva. So this is going back to what we've learned about COVID. Um, it's about practicing good hand hygiene to try and reduce cases and spread. So teach your children 20 seconds to wash their hands with soap and water. Um, let, if, let them have some tissues at hand so they can catch coughs and sneezes in their tissue, throw it away and wash their hands again. Avoid sharing cups and if you think there is, has been any sort of infection, staying away from vulnerable people. That might be pregnant people, newborn babies and people who are immunocompromised for example. So when should you get some help? As I said, there's a lot of viruses around so it may be that your child's just going to get better by themselves with a bit of paracetamol, a bit of calpol um, and some cuddles and lots of fluids. Um, so when do you need to worry? Well, first of all, I would say trust your parental instincts. Often if you just feel something's not right, there may be something in that. And if you're not happy, then do call 111 or speak to your GP. We also want to know if your child is not drinking very much at all. And that can mean they're dehydrated. You'll notice that they're not weeing very much. They might have dry nappies if they're still in nappies. They might have sunken eyes. So if you're worried about dehydration, that's when we'd like to know about it. Also, if they're very drowsy or irritable and not picking up with a bit of paracetamol, again, that's a little bit of a worrying sign and we want to know about it. If you have a baby who's less than three months old and they have a high temperature, we always want to check those babies out unless they've just had their immunizations. If after a recent bout of scarlet fever, your child's suffering with kind of puffy eyes, puffy face, cola colored urine or painful sore joints, again, come back and see us, please. We'd like to um, speak to you a bit more about that. There are some more worrying signs. And this is when we would like you to call 999 or go to A&E. And that includes if your child, if their skin becomes very cold and mottled with blue lips. If they're struggling with their breathing so much that they can't speak properly or eat and drink properly. 
if they're very agitated or confused or very drowsy, or if they have a rash that doesn't go away when you roll a glass over it. Please get seen straight away. So if your child has been diagnosed as likely having scarlet fever, then you will be given antibiotics for your child. This will be called penicillin V, unless they've got a penicillin allergy, in which case they'll be given azithromycin. And this usually works brilliantly well. Their fever usually starts to settle within about 12 hours, maybe 24 hours. But please do keep them at home for at least 24 hours after the antibiotics have started. And it's a good idea to keep them away from anyone who's vulnerable, so the pregnant women, the newborn babies, immunocompromised. And I would just say to end this that I, most infections we see are still going to be viral infections and don't require antibiotics at all. And there are downsides to giving antibiotics. So whilst we're all feeling a bit nervous as clinicians, we may be giving out more antibiotics. But there's a reason we don't give out antibiotics to everyone, so don't be upset if you don't get antibiotics. Uh, ch chances are your doctor has decided it's most likely a viral infection, and children get viral infections all the time and do get over them by themselves. Um, so whatever the coughs and sniffles is, if you're worried, speak to your GP. Remember that list of things to worry about to get to A&E, our uh, ring 999. But I think we don't need to panic, we just need to be a little bit aware and we doctors are aware and we will be seeing your children and making sure we're happy they are well. I hope that helps, hope that answers some of your concerns and queries and do look out for any more of my videos which you might, may find helpful. Thanks so much.